right, so the uh, orifice plate is installed. This is the six millimeter orifice plate. It's discharging at some flow rate that I'm later going to quantify. But what we want to know is uh, how to trace the trajectory. And so for this, you can see I've already set up a piece of graph paper on the board. It's clamped. The graph paper is flush with the bottom of the frame. Each one of these small squares on the graph paper is one millimeter. And so you can see that there's a uh, 50 millimeters in between each of the pins. And there also is 50 millimeters of distance between the opening of the orifice and the first pin, 50 millimeters. So what I want to do is I want to set up each of these pins so that it is, uh, it's behind but right in the middle of where that jet is. So it looks like I need to raise this pin a little bit. So I, I make adjustments to all of the pins and see that they're behind and about in the middle. If it's fluctuating slightly, I want it to be most of the time in the average of where that uh, the center of the jet is. Okay, so then when I've got the pins situated where I like, I'm going to uh, just mark the location. Okay, from the opening of the orifice to the first pin, I'm going to estimate that it has dropped uh, one millimeter. And I can use that, uh, put a ruler behind it, but my baseline assumption is going to be that it drops one millimeter. Again, there's going to be some fluctuation in what I can read for the elevation of that water. I do my best to take an average. I'd say it looks like, in this case, it's about 345 millimeters. So I'll make a note of that. All right, I'm going to draw a uh, horizontal line that represents the a vertical datum relative to the opening of that first of the orifice itself. All right, and so what I want to know is for each of these horizontal distances, how far has it fallen? So this is corresponding to x equals 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.4. Point four, And so I want to measure what is the distance for each of these. So what is the distance between here and there would be the uh, vertical distance that I'm going to report. Okay, I just measured it and it's 126 millimeters here. So I'll go ahead and make the measurement for all of the other points as well. I've gone through and measured all of the vertical distances at each of the corresponding horizontal positions. And now we'll translate that data into an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to translate that data that I'd collected in the lab. I need to also have a spot where I can specify what the water is. Okay, so uh, I'll enter in all of the data. just taken right off of the sheet that I prepared. Okay. And then 
and the uh, the fall height that I had measured during that was uh, 0.345 meters. Okay, uh, in the lab assignment, it explains that there should be a uh, let's see here. It, it says to calculate the um, need to calculate the um, C sub V by graphing the square root of Y times H. And so square root of Y times H is going to be fall height is what I mean by y. And um, in case you're not familiar with it, the what I did here to anchor, if you press the F4 button, it scrolls between anchoring options. I always want it to be looking up here for the H, and so if I press F4 once, then it just anchors. Um, well, if it, it's not anchored at all, like initially it wasn't anchored at all, and so if I want it to be um, here, I can press F4 and then it anchors both the column and the row, which is exactly what I want it to do when it drags it down. So it dragged it through, and so now I'm going to create a scatter plot. And as usual, Excel isn't great at guessing what I want it to plot. I just prefer to start from scratch. I want to have on the x axis the square root of y times h on the horizontal axis. And then on the vertical axis, I'm going to have the distance. It's a little unusual, but uh, because of what we're going to be doing with the slope of the line when we find that best fit line, that's what we want it to have. We want to have, um, we'll insert these axis titles just to make sure that we don't lose track of what it is. Okay, so here is the distance, x and that's in terms of meters. Down here is the uh, square root of y times h. Now when I insert a best fit line, right click, add trend line, I'm going to display the equation in the r squared value pretty nice linear fit, but what we learned from the instructions is that the slope of this line is 2 c sub v, and one of the things on this lab is to find what is c sub v, and so the slope I can read right off of there is 1.8997, and so c sub v is going to be this slope divided by 2. And so what we've calculated is a C sub V of about 0.95. And if you compare that to the information that's given in the lab handout, it says that a typical value for C sub V, depending on um, how sharp it is, you know, for a perfectly sharp edge orifice, we'd expect a C sub V of 0.98. If it was a thick plate and square edge, would have a C sub V of 0.86 and so what we found is somewhere between the two. It's closer to a sharp edge which is what we were going for as a sharp edge but it's not maybe as sharp as it could be there at the edge. We, may, we need to get out our file and make it sharper to uh, make that C sub V closer to 0.98 but still it's pretty good. So that's the demo on how that you can use the uh, graph paper to measure the, the trajectory of the jet that goes out of the orifice and then translate that trajectory into a C sub V.